Hello everybody, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this video is a follow-up video to my previous one where I looked at the risks to the ozone layer of objects re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. So when a satellite, like a Starlink satellite, which is a low Earth orbit satellite with a lifetime of about five years, when it, um, when it re-enters and burns up, in the atmosphere there's a lot of oxidation of various metals comprising the satellite and there's a lot of aluminum in particular in the satellite and that aluminum oxidizes and that's in the high atmosphere that's in the mesosphere and then it takes some time for that um, for those element th th those compounds elements to to uh, settle be pulled down by gravity and enter, you know, pass through the stratospheric layer where the ozone is. So it's a big concern because on the surface of the aluminum oxide, you get chlorines activated and you get the ozone. So, you, so it, the ozone destruction is, is a catalytic reaction, which um, is, a, is quite a large concern as we have more and more low earth objects for the Starlink system, for example. So I wanna show you um, some more details from these uh, peer reviewed papers and talk a little bit more about uh, what's happening. So this is the layers of the atmosphere. Okay, we're, we're in the tropo troposphere up to about 10 or 11 kilometers on average. It varies from about seven kilometers um, in the polar regions to about 17 kilometers in the equatorial regions. Up above it is the stratosphere and it's in this region roughly 20 to 30 kilometers that we have the ozone layer. It's where these polar stratospheric clouds, shimmering clouds form. And then up, up above it we have the uh, mesosphere and beyond that the thermosphere. When a satellite is re-entering um, it burns up in, uh, in the mesosphere. So the ionization of the metals, the oxidation of the metals is produced up in this region. And it takes, you know, as we in increase the number of low earth orbit satellites for these satellite constellations for high speed internet, they have to be close to the ground in low earth orbits to have a low latency. So the internet is fast, but the problem is, is these things re-entering create these aluminum oxides, which then settle by gravity down through the stratosphere. And when they reach the ozone layer regions, they can severely degrade the ozone layer. So, so that's what we're looking at. So this is a paper where uh, metals from spacecraft re-entry were looked at in the stratospheric aerosol particles. They've already been identified. So we have a large increase in the number of low Earth orbit satellites. Um, there's perhaps 50,000, I think 70,000 even additional satellites expected to be in orbit by 2030. And these metal vapors that are produced when these objects uh, re-enter re the atmosphere and burn up, condense into aerosol particles that descend down into the stratosphere. So this is an actual measurement of particles that are, it's a measurement of the metals that are, that are found in um, spacecraft, from spacecraft re-entry in the stratospheric sulfuric acid particles. So these are very important for the ideas of, of, uh, um, Self, uh, of, of sulfur um, atmospheric, um, you know, SRM, solar radiation management, solar, you know, um, sulfur aerosol, aerosol injection into the, into, the, uh, into the stratosphere, right? When we talk about these, these processes, there's a lot of chemistry going on. So we need to understand what's happening with these metals from the spacecraft. There's been over 20 elements from re-entry detected, and they're, they're found in the ratios consistent with allies used in spacecraft. 
Okay, so this uh, uses um, spectrum uh, mass spectrometry mass spectrometry to look at the spectra of the single particles and these are all the different elements that are detected um, so iron magnesium sodium sulfur here nickel so, so so these elements are a definite signature of satellites burning up on re-entry not of uh, meteor meteors uh, burning up naturally because right, we know the combinations of different elements in in uh, in the meteors, and these are not from meteors; these are from satellites. So there's single particle, uh, positive ions, negative ions, single particle with niobium and hafnium, positive ions, negative ions. Okay, so there's a big issue here. Um, so I'll just go down uh, here. So they actually measured. Um, it's remarkable that the products of spacecraft re-entry occurring about 50 kilometers altitude can be measured with, with such sensitivity in aerosol particles at above 19 kilometers altitude. Okay, so the, some of these metals are, very, are quite rare and they're only found in spacecraft construction. So we know you know, the, this, we know that it's from the spacecraft burning up. And uh, these metals are condensing and going, ending up in the stratospheric sulfuric acid particles. And this is a huge issue for um, atmospheric chemistry and for the, uh, the ozone layer. Uh, what else did I want to show? Well, it says here, the space industry has entered an era of rapid growth with tens of thousands of small satellites planned for low Earth orbit. The, in, the increased mass will be divided into many more re-entry events. Given that 10% of stratospheric particles now, today, contain enhanced aluminum with many more re-entry events, it's likely that in the next few decades, the percentage contains aluminum and other metals from satellite re-entry will, will, will go up significantly. Now, the key thing to remember is, as I mentioned, is that the burn-up occurs up here in the mesosphere, and it can take decades, you know, 10, 20, 30 years for all of the aluminum oxides in the mesosphere to drop down and then go through the stratosphere, affecting the ozone layer. So this is a problem. You know, we could load up the mesosphere with these these metallic oxides, specifically aluminum oxide, and not even pay any attention and be aware. And then, dec you know, 10, 20 years later, 30 years later, uh, the ozone layer vanishes. Hey, what happened to it? You know, we have to make sure that, that's, that this isn't um, going to completely crush the uh, ozone layer. The other, so this is the paper, this is the more recent paper, Potential Ozone Depletion from Satellite Demise During Atmospheric Reentry in the Era of Mega Constellations. Okay, so a typical 250 kilogram satellite, you know, low Earth orbit for running very high speed internet on the, sur on the planet. Um, can generate 30 kilograms of aluminum oxide nanoparticles, which may endure for decades in the atmosphere. And the aluminum oxide compounds generated by the entire population of satellites re-entering the atmosphere in 2022 is estimated at 17 metric tons. We're talking about 360 metric tons when we have these mega constellations that are, you know, in the lifetimes only five years, and then we replace it and, you know, and so on. So we're talking about a massive increase in aluminum oxide, which could become a big deal for the, the ozone layer. So this does a model um, and has a look, uh, you know, it tries to simulate and model what happens when aluminum from the satellite re-enters, the aluminum gets broken up, we get these aluminum oxides, this is aluminum, the, uh, the gray big balls and the reds are the oxygen. 
and you can get so you get aluminum clusters of metal and you get aluminum oxide okay so this is a very very important significant uh, paper and then they show settling times and so on and the you know, aluminum oxide is a known um, catalyst for uh, for for activating chlorine in the form that can uh, act as a catalyst to destroy ozone. The re-entry byproducts may take up to 30 years to settle from the top of the mesosphere into the stratospheric ozone layer. When they reach an altitude of about 40 kilometers, the aluminum oxide catalyzes chlorine activation, which promotes ozone depletion. Okay, so this suggests that the concentrations of aluminum oxide compounds may start increasing in the mesosphere well before reaching the stratospheric ozone layer. So there would be a noticeable delay between the beginning of the injection process when orbiting bodies are decommissioned and the eventual ozone depletion consequences. Okay, so, so this is a very, very, you know, important uh, paper, like I say. I went to Deep Seek and Perplexity, and I asked it um, to generate, to find NASA debris analysis report for re-entry of satellites. Okay, so I looked at both viewpoints from both AIs. So, you know, basically they identify the objects, they predict when the re-entry will happen, they analyze whether any of the debris will survive and hit the ground and give a risk assessment for people on the ground, and then they try to mitigate it, coordinating with other agencies, right? But they don't really, up to now, they haven't really been concerned with what happens to the, when it does uh, burn up on re-entry, what happens to all of the metal oxides that come off and go into the atmosphere, especially with so many satellites going up. So the same sort of picture was here uh, with uh, perplexity.ai. You know, it's all about the debris, you know, um, and making sure it doesn't hit anybody on the head on the ground. Now, I got some of these uh, articles and information. So this is orbital debris uh, there's a there's a quarterly news report on orbital um, debris. There's um, you know it talks about the different trajectories and what's coming down. Um, different materials like carbon fiber, reinforced polymer, how that fares in going through the atmosphere. Because if you make a satellite out of something that won't burn up, then you're going to get fragments reaching the ground. So there's a lot of information there. You know, how do you clean up 170 million pieces of space junk, right? There's, there may be as many as 170 million pieces of debris in orbit, with the vast majority is too small to track due to limits in current technology, but no less dangerous. So we are tracking a small fraction of those. We're tracking 55,000 pieces, um, more than 27,000 objects like spent rocket boosters, active satellites, dead satellites are monitored by the Department of Defense. And when they re when the objects move from low Earth orbit, they're going, they're whipping along at very fast speeds. So that uh, causes a lot of, you know, it just breaks up the bonds in the metal and mostly just, uh, you know, they burn up. So there's information here on, um, you know, things that they can do and so on to try to mitigate the space junk. And this is an article I found, the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration. Um, it's a report on the risk associated with re-entry disposal of satellites from proposed large constellations in low Earth orbit. So they are looking at this, but from what I can tell, um, there's a yeah, I mean, it's a 66-page report. From what I can tell, they, they mostly look at the risk associated with re-entering space objects, the risk being of objects hitting the ground. Okay, they don't really talk about the... So they talk about world population density, the density of commercial aircraft, whether that could be affected by 
spacecraft re-entry and so on right but it's not as far as i can see there's very little if anything on the um, what happens to the metals after they oxidize and go into the atmosphere okay so again you know the risk is mostly about what ob what can hit the ground okay so this is a key picture here spacecrafts come in they, they burn up in the mesosphere they create all of these um, gases uh, metal gases volatiles and which can then condense as and they're pulled by gravity down through the atmosphere depending on their size of course larger particles will will come down more quickly smaller ones um, you know depends on the densities and air resistance etc but they come down and when they come through the stratosphere that's when we could have big problems with the ozone so i thought that this topic was very very important so um, i wanted to do a second video on it thank you for listening please consider going to my website paulbeckwith.net and donating to paypal to support my research and videos thanks again and bye for now